Uh, Douglas. Yes, sir. You're up. So this is from The Guardian. Um, Ukrainian pilot Andrei Pilschikov, call of sign Juice, was killed on Friday when two, apparently two L-39s collided west of Kiev. And um, he was an advocate for F-16s being given to or loaned to Ukraine. Um, that's the tie-in. He was apparently a powerful advocate for F-16s and unfortunately will not get to fly them. Yeah, it's pretty sad training uh, training accident. I mean, I, I read that article. I didn't know that uh, he had trained with the Fresno Guard guys, which I thought was was pretty cool. No, that's how he got his... That. That's was how he got his that call when, Was that when Fresno lost that guy in the back? When they had I that don't, mishap? I don't know. That, yeah, that was yeah. a couple of years ago and he... I forget in the article when, when he went and trained with the, the Fang, but um, I mean, he must have been flying the Eagle, right? Maybe in exchange. I, I don't know what kind of training he was doing, but he was there long well, enough. Fresno for them went over there. Yeah, Fresno went back over there. The, their oh, mishap happened over there in yeah. the back of a MiG-29. No, Sue, Sue uh, is a flanker. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, it's sad, man. I mean, for you guys, go on. This guy, I, I've seen some articles, and the problem when you talk about Ukraine, especially on Twitter, is it brings out the worst in people. You know, I, I get it. I get it. You know, there's there's so much political stuff around it. There's stuff, you know, I, I we all have our political beliefs. We all believe, you know, what's right, what's wrong. But at the end of the all of this, they're people. And you know, whether, whether it's fighter pilots, people on the ground or whatever, people losing their lives. I have seen some very stupid takes. I saw one of them I even responded to on Twitter where the guy said, you know, these idiots, and that's his words. He said, these idiots are crashing into each other. Why do we want to give them F-16s? And you look at this and you go, well, first of all, slow down there, cowboy. Every country in the world that has that does fast jets for a living is susceptible to this. It doesn't matter whether they speak English, Russian, Chinese, it doesn't matter. Fast jet business is just dangerous. It's, it's, it's not, it's not easy. So what happened to him has nothing to do with any of the geopolitical stuff. What happened to him, we as fighter pilots go, that sucks, nickel on the grass. You know, we lost somebody that was decent and juice was a good guy. I've talked to um, some people, intermediaries. We were trying to get him interviewed. In fact, back in back in the fall, we never could get it, the timing and all that to work out because there's a lot of approval process and stuff. But I was trying to interview him because the dude was a was kind of like us, you know, advocate of aviation, advocate of his country. He loved his country. He loved flying fast jets, and he wanted to see his country do well in the air and on the ground. And you have to respect that. Doesn't matter what side you're on, you respect the hell out of that because that was, you know, his passion. And I, I I'm with him. I, I, th I think it's awesome. The mishap itself, we won't speculate. We don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know what what their process is, but they, I mean, running jets into each other is part of training. It is the danger of training. It is the danger of doing this job. The Americans are not immune. Nobody is immune to stuff like that. It sucks. It sucks when you've got a guy that's high level, but that's not something that, you know, is, is just because they're Ukrainian. And then the final part I'll say, I don't think this guy, and I, I've seen this article too, I don't think he wanted all the, the fame. You know, I don't think he wanted to be called the ghost of Kiev because that was a myth that was perpetuated by a lot of stupid people in the media that they just ran with it because it was good for morale. But this dude, on his own merits, was a, a good dude and a badass. And that's what we should be thankful for and burn the piano, throw the nickel in the grass, you know, honor a fellow fighter pilot <laughs> and not try to add all the, the lore to it as well. Yeah, man. I mean, he, he even says, you know, hey, I, I'm not the ghost of Keith. He's like collectively, he's like we, like right. his, him and his squadron mates were, you know, were that legend. Um, yeah. Which I mean, 
I've never met the guy. I've never met the other two guys that perished as well. But kind of like you said, Mover, guaranteed, those guys are just trying to execute the flight schedule, man, to the best of their ability. They're 100%. just they're looking out for one another. They got families. They got friends. And honestly, those guys, you know, at the level they were training, they could care less what was going on outside in the outside world, politics, yep. whatever. Those guys were just trying to do the best job that they could do. And, you know, I, I'm not on Twitter, <clears throat> but we have midairs in the U S all the time. I mean, relatively speaking, you know, I mean, we have midairs. I mean, I almost had a midair. That was, that was my almost ejection, <laughs> you know, it was a midair. Um, and to, you know, to think that, and, you know, when people say, and I saw, I saw some of those, just from reading articles, you know, people saying like these clowns can't handle F-16s. I mean, that's pretty, that's super ignorant to be honest. A hundred percent. I mean, it's yeah. any, any fighter pilot can handle, handle an airplane. It, it's all in, in the training. Exactly. These guys just, like you said, accidents happen. I'm sure there were Wait. mistakes made, but I mean, that's the nature of the business. I've never had a perfect flight. You know, so well, he's he's he, he was an advocate for his country in getting new equipment. I'd be doing the same thing, dude. Course. If I'm flying, we do you know, the same I thing, mean, <laughs> uh, right? You know, I'm the, I'm going to be first one standing on somebody's desk going, "Hey, give us better equipment to to fight this war." You can't fault him for that. No, you cannot fault. You might be able to to fault the higher echelons where money changes hands and stuff like that, but the dudes doing the mission, they're doing it for. God and country, man. That's it. I mean, that's that is what it boils. And the and the dude or dudette next to him. That's yeah. it. And that's I mean, honestly, man, that's on all sides of the war. I mean, I you know, I don't have a ton of combat experience, but my combat experience, I was just trying to help the guys next to me, you know, like I was trying to help the guys yeah. on the ground. I was trying to make sure that my wingman was doing the right thing. I could care less about the politics, what was going on outside the cockpit, because you're called on a task to do. You're scheduled to do it. The government pays you to do it. And you, you do it the best of your ability, because if you don't, your friends might die, you know, and that's that's what actually hurts, <laughs> you know? Yeah. What do you think, Wombat? So, You've been quiet. No, I, I agree 100%. Um, you know, there wasn't one mission I flew, whether it was training, combat, anything um in my time where i gave two dams about the politics or why some politician or some high up military guy made the decision for us to be there i just knew that my friends were there and i wanted to get them home and that was it um you don't think about that stuff you don't care about this i mean you know when you're in port or you're back back home not on deployment sure you know do you talk about it of course you do i mean it's it's affecting your lives and the decisions that are made. And, um, but in the moment, like, you know, it's one of my buddies once equated it to like, and I'm not an advocate that athletes and people in the military are, are the same, but you know, they equated it. We were talking about this and he goes, well, how, you know, somebody asked like, well, it's like an athlete who has a broken limb or something, but they're, they're still playing. You know what I mean? You're, they're not thinking about the pain of that. They're just, it's adrenaline. You're just, you're there to do your job. You, you'll deal with that stuff later. And, um, you know, to me, there was no worse thing than leaving somebody on deployment. Like that's, that's a fate worse than anything. I would have rather died myself, frankly, than have somebody else not make it home. So I agree. You know, I think it's ridiculous that, and this is the problem with social media. I mean, it's, it's great because some, idiot from New Jersey could write two books and sell them. And that's awesome. Cause 20 years ago, that would have never happened. But the negative and the ugly side of social media is, you know, you get these people that just think they know it all and think they have the right answer. And it's like, dude, that's somebody's life, man. That's somebody's mom, dad, husband, wife, you know, kid, like you can make your post, but like, well, what, what we forget think about it as Americans, we, as fighter pilots, Right. To Wombat's point. Right. You'd rather not you'd rather not leave somebody behind. Dude, there's nowhere to leave behind. It's there. It's in their backyard. Sure. I mean, that's Wolverines. You know, I mean, yeah. you're losing the, the, the wives, girlfriends, brothers, all that stuff. They've, they've got hypersonic missiles inbound trying to attack their training location. This this was like yeah. a couple of weeks ago, you know, where they have 16 guys 
the first cadre were ha- were hanging out, they were trying to lob missiles at them. So I don't. I mean, this guy is is feel. I'm sure he feels isolated. You know, he feels like, hey, what, what's the rest of the world doing? Why are we fighting this by ourselves? And he is going to do everything he can. And he's well spoken, so they put him in front of, you know, others, interviews, media, stuff like that, because he's a fighter pilot fighting for his country. Yeah. I don't, I don't care what your politics are, dude, you pick up a rifle, you get in the jet, you do what you have to do to save, you know, your homeland. And when you die in the defense of that, even if a training, even if it's a training mission, it's, it's an honorable, honorable death. death. Yeah. 100% death. put I mean, the flag on the coffin. Yes. A hundred percent. It doesn't death. matter what they were doing. It's a training incident, but he was trying to make his country better. And you know, him, him. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. So. That being said, man, I mean, it's just another, it's just, it's, it's just too bad that there's just so much uh, death and destruction going on over there right now. Yeah. Agreed. 